The facts speak for themselves. Immediately at the time of Hurricane Katrina, all of the animals were not evacuated. As a result of that, animals were put at harm's risk. Animals were washed out to sea. What do we do with all these animals that have been displaced, have been through a tremendous amount of trauma? It's not like we just raised our hand. Dolphin Key was interviewed, and we had to go through a, a tremendous amount of due diligence to make sure that we would care for these animals. A happy ending to the story would be that those animals, or some of them, be returned back to the Gulf Coast. One of the best things that happened to that group of dolphins was going together to that facility. It's a state-of-the-art facility. The story's met with a lot of awes and unbelievable, can't believe it happened, and you know, maybe a little tear here and there, you know. But we should start at the beginning, the Friday before Katrina, when the National Weather Service was predicting that Katrina as a Category 5 was going to come to shore and that Gulfport was in the center of the cone of uncertainty. Marine Life Oceanarium was open for business as usual. It was when the owner, Don Jacobs, came on the property and saw that there were dolphins still on property. And him and uh, the director of the Oceanarium at the time, Dr. Solange, had a big argument whether the dolphins should have been moved or what they could do now to move them, because we were running out of light. Hurricanes, tropical storms, they come and go, flooding happens, you want to come back and get into business quickly. And the whole idea was to save your animals and your physical assets. So we took six dolphins and we took them to the uh, hotels up Highway 49, three at the Best Western and three at the Holiday Inn in their swimming pools and we left eight dolphins in the main tank at Marine Life, fending for themselves. During the fury of the storm, I spent most of the time going from one dolphin pool at one hotel to the other, pulling the debris out. When I drove the next day to Marine Life on Monday, after the storm, I mean, there wasn't really much of anything left except for the remnants of the two largest tanks. I climbed up the debris because I had to know were the dolphins in the tank on the bottom. Now the tank still had a good four or five foot of water in it at the time. Muddy water, you couldn't see through it. So I climbed into the tank, climbed down the debris, and using my hands for about an hour, I probed every inch of the bottom of that pool, fully expecting to find all the dolphin carcasses in there. I didn't find any. 13 days later, things had started to stabilize a little bit. We put the trainers on the boat, and I took off with the trainer in a helicopter. We, we said, we'll just trace over marine life and then keep on going south. I noticed uh, there was movement on the, on the water, but we weren't sure if these were wild dolphins or our dolphins. And it was just a matter of unbelievable uh, excitement that as the boat came up, one, two, three, all eight showed up right next to the bucket. Most of us jumped into the water right then and there, and the dolphins came over. The, the younger ones were nipping on my feet. It was obvious to me anyway that those dolphins were very glad to see us. Those dolphins that had been out in the wild before, they seemed to have been all right. But some of those that had really had no experience with the wild or limited experience seemed like they were uh, needing some medical attention. Nothing was really known about what we were going to do, where we were going to take the dolphins. Dr. Solange and I started setting about calling various facilities. Several sister organizations that said, yes, we would help you out and uh, work some things out. There was a few that offered to uh, house our animals free of charge. That was not the, uh, a, a deal that Dr. Solange was willing to make. I'm not uh, privy to the exact nature of the conversations between uh, the owner, Don Jacobs, and, and Moby, but I know Don already was not happy that there were so dolphins there during the hurricane, and he certainly wasn't happy that we had no place to put them, and Dr. Solange was trying to charge people when we had places for free. We were partners, and he felt that uh, uh, he wanted to quit. Don Jacobs fired Dr. Solange and hired David Lyon. 
it was clear that um, there was some disagreement between Don and, and Moby as to where, um, what the future of the Dolphins would be. And his instructions from Don Jacobs were, I want these Dolphins to go to one facility as a group. That, that was his wish. After we evaluated all things considered, the Atlantis, it was just gonna be second to none. People kept saying, why don't you just keep them here? What was here? Nothing but devastation and destruction. I was a partner both in marine life and the company that owned the animals. It was not my decision. And I challenged that decision in court. Marine life was a 50-year-old facility that we had been working with Congress to replace it. And I worked very hard, prior to the storm, trying to get funding to build a new facility. I planned my entire career around that. My opportunity to do something and return something back to the community was, in my mind, taken away from me. I think Dr. Solange's ultimate goal was that he knew he was building a new research facility and he wanted those dolphins to secure grant money. Four years of our discussions and arguments, he was settled and whatever it was. And the settlement agreement is sealed by the court, so I'm not at liberty to discuss that. The Katrina Dolphins are Jackie, Michelle, Tamara, Kelly, Noah, Elijah, Jill, and Tony. Everybody make some noise! We have to make sure that these animals are well cared for every single day. And we had to be willing to take on that immense responsibility before even considering helping the folks rescue the Katrina Dolphins and bring them to Dolphin Key. They definitely have bonds between each other, so uh, the Katrina Dolphins kind of stick together. It's just amazing to see the, the bond that they were able to form from then and still be able to carry over now. After I came back from the Bahamas, I came to the Marine Life to walk through the destroyed facility. Coincidentally, Don Jacobs, the owner, was walking through that same day. And he asked me, Jeff, did I do the right thing? And I said, Don, I'm gonna tell you a story. The story of Jill. The oldest dolphin we had, who was washed out. This dolphin didn't seem to me like she wanted to come back. When I got to the Bahamas, and I saw her with the other dolphins, all of them, I'd never seen her happy. This big 600 pound dolphin in her 40s is jumping literally across huge docks to get from one area to another, like an exuberant little child. And to see her doing that there was a powerful experience. And that's how I knew that, Don, you made the right decision. <laughs>